Welcome back. The sword is pretty much complete. We've got a bit of clear varathane on our blade. We're stained. This is good to go if you want to. However, we want to add a little bit of um, eye candy to it. So today we're going to add a little bit of copper detailing to the base of our sword just to make it a little bit different and maybe a little uh, bit of a highlight between the, the different woods and the copper. So let's get started shaping the copper to the sword. We are using copper. Uh, this is a 0 0.016 thickness, so it's it's not too thin, but it's not too thick. Obviously, it's flexible. You can use whatever you want, really. If you want to use aluminum, you can find that at Home Depot. You can use an old tin can smashed up and shaped, whatever you want to use. I'm just using copper because I think it has a nice contrast between the, the two shades of wood. So uh, let's start by getting this out, marking it, shaping it, and we'll go from there. So instead of getting my tape measure out and taping this side and taping the two edges and the other side, we're just going to do a little bit of cheating here just to see that we've got enough material, which I know we do, but let's just go over it. So we've got that mark. We'll move it up there. Do another mark there. And then on the edge, we have a thickness of three quarters of an inch or 19 millimeters. So we'll go there and we'll go here like so so that is what we actually need and then we're going to go another i don't know let's go an inch just to have extra to play play with and that will be the end of our material so i'm not going to cut it just yet i'm just going to mark it we'll start shaping it but that as we get around the first half we'll know exactly how our lines are marking out or working out and then we'll we'll probably cut this back what we're going to do is start our copper on the edge, then we're going to bend it, bend it, bend it, and then come back around and we'll lap over this, this edge of this copper and we'll tie it together on the edge here. So there'll be two layers? On there'll the be two layers on this edge, yep. So this is 0.0, what is it, 1.6? 16 thou. 16 thou. Excellent. We'll have that doubled on this edge here. So let's start by um, maybe cranking this over a little bit. I'm, I'm going to make it a little bit short so it's not all the way off. And we'll call this right here. We'll call that our actual edge that we're going to bend. So let's just give ourselves a mark to go with. Mark it right there. This is going to be our break line. This is where we want to make a 90 degree bend in that copper. So to do that, I'm going to bring my little, my old beat up car body uh, hammer. What is it, Kim? It's a hammer. And we're going to start the first one off with the actual hammer. There's different ways to do this as well. But we're going to, we're going to use this. So we've got our line just on the edge of the anvil, and we're just going to tap, tap. Now this is copper. If you, it's not going to maintain this really nice finish because it's a, it's a 16 thou thickness, so it's, it's susceptible to little dimples. But that's fine because uh, it just adds to the, the look. So I'm just going to massage this to start off with just to kind of set the copper on the corner. You can see it's starting to crease and starting to crease. And this middle wants to jump up a little bit. But this is the nice thing about copper. It is flexible. And my left hand is doing most of the work here. I want to make sure that that copper is not going to just jump around. I got this hammer when I was 16 years old for my birthday. My dad got me a bodywork kit. I think this is the only one I have left and the only reason I've got it is I was up at my dad's house not too long ago and found it in his garage. I saved it. It's been there ever since. Got the old crummy tape holding things together. All right, just, just gonna nurse along this 
edge. Okay, so let's test this now to the sword. What are we looking at? That's pretty decent. Got a little bit of overlap there. But that's all right, we can massage that in later. So let's mark our next edge of the sword itself, which is right here. Make two marks into one, like that guy. So now that we've got this started, I think what we're just going to do is hold the sword in place with my palm. I'm just going to massage that break line there. And this one might take a little bit of love, because the copper wants to pop up at this point right here. So, just take your time. I think I'll just give her a little tap along that edge. Okay, now I've got enough of a bend down there, I should be able to roll this up. Yes. All right, now, let me just grab a clamp. We'll clamp this in place so it just holds things nice and then we'll finish up on that edge. Two inch clamp, we want to clamp this down. The thing is, these little copper uh, points, if I crank on it, are going to put a little dimple in the copper because it's soft. So we'll use a piece of stock that's a little smaller than the blade and we'll give this a little snug it doesn't have to be anything crazy tuning that copper up on the edge okay that feels happy now don't freak out if your bottom of your copper is not running perfectly along the bottom we're gonna have a little bit of uh, a little bit of copper down, or a little opening of, of wood. But that's all right. I have a plan. All right, that's looking fine. Again, scratches, not a problem, because a, a, a light dusting with sandpaper is going to tune this up just lovely. Okay, now we're going to spin this over, and the final stretch, we're going to muscle this one over now. Now we have that edge. Approaching the final turn. So here we know that we're going to be lapping over to this uh, this side of the copper. So let's just go like this and make a mark here. This is our actual this is our actual line. Okay. So we want to cut this excess off. So this is our line, and now what we'll do is we'll come up uh, less than three quarters. We'll go probably 15 mil, five eighths, uh, and then we'll we'll score this, cut off that extra, and then we'll roll it, it over and attach it to the uh, the other copper. So we'll go 15 mils, which will be about five eighths of an inch. That'll give us enough overlap. Maybe we'll go 16 just to be safe. I think that's, yeah. 
Again, we're not building pianos here. Try to make it easy on ourselves though. And then another 15 plus the one there is 16. And then we'll mark our line, connect the dots. And then we'll bring in everybody's best friend, Mr. Olfen Knife. Because you could cut this with um, tin snips, no problem. But the um, problem with tin snips is they, uh, they leave a, a nasty edge. That's the si sound of me banging off the, the dull tip. Okay, so we're just going to use our knife and just take our time and watch out for your fingers. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on this. In fact, I'm just sort of dragging it as if I'm cutting. Let's see, what does this feel like? Um, less pressure than you would cutting pizza. Mom's pizza. The kind with the crust that's a little bit overdone. That you don't say anything about because you, you don't want to get your mom upset at you. You can see I got a little bit of a tweak right here. Where it jumped off. Doesn't matter. There's another one. Oh, there's another one. Focus, Kim. So let's just see where we're at first. I'm going to give it one more. And I'm going to use my tried and true. This one's a little thin. I'm afeard that I might be actually gouging the, the ruler. I'm afeard. Yeah, this feels better. So there's our line. give us a little bend here. This is easier to do when the copper is uh, is a lighter gauge, but you can still do it with this. Just going to massage it and then you'll feel it start to go and boom! You cut your copper. Okay, let's go back to the mobile bench over here. Traded in our little two inch clamp for our Bessie clamp. And we'll throw a piece of material on the back and a little piece of material on the front just to hold things decently for us. That also protects it. Right? Yeah, yeah, it keeps it from, from marring up the surface. The, these things have a lot of, um, when you start cranking on these, there's, there's some power there. It'll, it'll dimple wood quite easily, so a copper won't even stand a chance. All right. Good. So, this is the roll. This right here, it is sharp. So, when you're, uh, when you're messing around with it, watch your fingers. Maybe give it a little bit of love with the sandpaper. And just like before, we'll give it a little massage. Eh? Massage. Make sure everything under there is happy. And I'm just going to put this up here for a second. Give her a little bit more of a tap tap on this, uh, this corner. copper has a corner on it like if it's a, a closer to a 90 if it actually has a bend on it then the copper will stay where you want it if it's just a rollover the copper is going to want to spring open and uh, and that makes things a little bit more difficult to, to deal with the copper is together now we've wrapped it it's ready to go we've got to hold it in place we are going to use uh, cut nails these are like the old um, nails that were used back in the 1800s 
and they are actually a cut nail with a rolled over head and they look kind of cool so we're going to use that if you're wondering where to get them lee valley i get all of my uh kind of really hard to find uh products there and these are one of those you can't just go down and ask for cut nails at the local uh hardware store so these are going to go in and we will lay those out right now we're going to mark center here just to make this a little easier So our four nails that we're going to put in here, we'll center them on uh, the edge of our copper and uh, mark them out so they're where they're going to look best. We'll come in 10 mils, I think that's 3 eighths, and we'll go 20 mils, just over 3 quarters, and 20 mils, and 20 mils. And now we're going to use the... Uh, ball peen hammer the little guy it's got a little bit more mass to it and copper is soft enough that when we go into the copper uh, with this it should cut pretty decent so the tip of your cut nail is like a chisel so you have a flat side and you have a narrow side and the grains running along this way and I just want to I don't want to split the grain apart I want to cut through it so I'm going to run my flat edge this way like so now you can use anything you can use regular little two and a quarter commons or, or finishing nails it doesn't matter I just happen to have these from an old project and I don't have a lot of call for uh, cut nails we're just going to use a couple up first one's going home Another thing is you could cut your nails down you don't have to be that long I could actually cut this down if I wanted to if you're just using finishing nails you could cut cut it down so there's only like a, a quarter inch and that's going to be enough to hold things in place all right let's pull this apart See, they're all dimpled in. I'm happy with that. Let's just take a look and see what we've got as I drop things to the ground. That looks all right. Now you're probably looking at this saying, what's going on down there? We're going to add a little extra to that. But so far, I think that looks pretty cool. So if you're feeling artsy when you're laying this all out before you nail it up, you can, you know, carve or cut patterns in here or do whatever you'd like. But for now, that's going to look pretty good. <laughs> 